Bet Bobs of New York. They take on Nashville this weekend. Uh, they're fourth in the Eastern Conference, good for 29 points. They did lose that game against the Revolution, but Forsberg's coming back, Tolkien's coming back, uh, Ailey as well, uh, and potentially others. Bob will let you know. Uh, Nashville, ninth in the Eastern Conference on 16 points. They are 1-2-1 one, and one since Gary Smith went out as manager minus 135 for a new york outright play for nashville uh plus 390 the total is set right on two and a half B- bob do we need to take your temperature you don't have a play <laughs> in this game what's going on here i don't and, and it, it has Rough to be these players missing and even yeah. if they're not missing, they're traveling very far on airplanes to get back to New Jersey on time. Going from the east, you know, Europe, uh, all the way west to the east coast of the United States, that, that that's tough travel, and I, I don't want to downplay that at all. And when you see how bad this team's been over the past five years at breaking down any kind of bunker, when you put them up against Nashville, that doesn't really inspire hope. Okay. Um, Dan, you do have a play. Surprise, surprise, so do I. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Uh, what's your play in this game, Dan? Well, it, well, the good thing about you know maybe having some uh, some plane legs is there's two halves in each game, so you can shake them out and get ready <laughs> to go for the second half, and that's why I'm looking for the second half to be higher scoring. One of our loyal viewers, Kay Moreau, he was happy that we came through with the second half to be higher scoring as that game was just brutal last week. We're going back to the well um, because it, it's just uh, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And Red Bull games being higher scoring in the second half. I, we are only getting minus 105 on this. So the books are starting to catch on, uh, not hanging this out there at plus money anymore. But we're still underneath that customary 110. So we're beating the juice there. Um, I I, I drop these stats every week so you can basically just take my segment and repeat it but red bulls second (laughs) half 72 percent of their matches at home they are scoring in the second half um and if you look at just the average on these red bull games they average just over three goals per match total between the two teams 65 percent of those three goals have been scored in the second half of red bulls games and in nashville's case their worst split as far as goals conceded coming away matches where they average a goal allowed a full goal allowed in the second half versus under that in the first half so um what I wanted to initially do was was take everything out of it and just look for the Red Bulls to score in the second half. But that price, minus 195 for them to find the back of the net in the second half. So this is a way to kind of get a similar or the same bet. Factor in a potential score late for Nashville as well. Let's get a snooze fest in the first and at least one goal in the second. Wash, rinse, repeat at a manageable minus 105. Give me the second half to be the higher scoring one in this one, Gareth. Um, it. It applies to the way that the Red Bulls play. They wear teams down and they break them down over time. And as mistakes come into play, then the team uh, suffers that they that they play against. I'm going to back my my initial play was going to be backing uh, the Red Bulls on the team total of over a goal and a half at minus one thirteen. Yep. I said, ah, like forget that. about that. I, I I'm just going to go with the Red Bulls on the handicap straight up here because they are elite home side. In Major League Soccer, four wins in their last four uh, for the Red Bulls ahead of that New England trip where they were missing loads of players. No losses at home on the season. Five, two and oh, the third best uh, home expected goal differential per 90 minutes across Major League Soccer. The best expected goals against. They only have only given up 4.7 expected goals against in seven games. That is such a low number. Now, you tell me others other than Mukhtar who can break you down on this national side. Schaffelberg's gone this weekend. Shaq Moore, he's off with the U.S. men's national team. I just look at his national side as still being significantly limited. Um, they have the third west of way expected goal differential per 90 minutes in the Eastern Conference, and they've only scored four goals away in, in, in six games, which is the joint fewest away goals scored along with Austin. So a team that defends really well at home, against a side that has a lot of trouble scoring away from home. It, it just skewed me towards Red Bull. Uh, recent history as well, uh, Red Bull, no losses in six and no goals conceded in their last four games against Nashville. So I'm expecting Forsberg is going to come back. I mean, he, he played on the weekend, uh, Bob. Like, he's not playing midweek and expected to come back. Like, 
they finished up on the weekend. Yeah, it, it should uh, be but, enough time for me, but I do want to uh, just, just if you asked who's going to score. Uh-oh. This is a revenge game for three Nashville players. Drew Yearwood, Sean Davis, and Alex Mouille, all ex-Red Bulls. They'd be gone if, for years. If anything gone happened, to be one of those guys uh, coming and stabbing us in the heart in this one. Uh, Have them do it in yeah. the second half. They can stab me in the heart. <laughs> stab me in the heart all you want. Just do it in the second half. Love it. Yeah. No stabbing. Please be gentle. Uh, two plays here. And surprisingly, Bob not making a play on the Red Bull. Uh, back in the Red Bull, second half. High scoring at minus 105. 